Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello out there, my Hello Self podcast world. I'm so excited to share my guest story and what he does for a living and for fun and how he serves our communities and other countries. As you remember, Hello Self podcast is really about turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And I believe one of the best ways to do that is for our guests to share their story because I believe in every story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So remember, we will be uh, giving you tips and strategies for Hello Self moments that my guest woke, that woke up him about his life or career direction. And hopefully, Hello Self will wake you up too because our goal is to help you get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf and manifest them now. <clears throat> and the guest that I have today is a magician. So this may be a perfect way to help you start creating some magic in your own life. So before I introduce my guest from his bio, I'd like for you to meet Steve Varro, Christian illusionist and Steve, just say hi to our audience. Hello, audience. And hello, Patricia. It's <laughs> yes, great to see you again. That's great. <laughs> it's going to be fun already. Hi, audience. <laughs> but anyway, let me give you um, a little overview of who Steve is and what he's done. I, I met him a couple of years ago, and I, you know how you meet somebody and you don't really know who they are. And then I read this bio and I said, Wow, I'm even impressed more. One thing that I shared with Steve a little earlier is, as a little girl, I was always intrigued by magic, the sleight of hand kind of thing. Then I had a son of my own, and he could take it or leave it, and I would say, let's go to the magic show. So I'm still interested in understanding how that happens, because Obviously, we don't pay attention. <laughs> okay, let me give you an overview of Steve's bio. And I'll just pick some things out here because Steve is going to tell you his real story after I give you this overview. Like most sleight of hand artists, Varro, Steve Varro, became interested in the world of illusion as a young boy at the age of 10. And he wanted to learn everything he could about it. Steve has become a full-time professional traveling all over the world, United States, Canada, and even beyond. He's done corporate events, worked with children in schools, colleges, youth retreats. Steve is the recipient of many war awards during his 20 years as a professional entertainer including the Grand Prize Award of Alex Excellence, be easy for me to say, huh? <laughs> from the Magic Arts Guild in California. Steve discovered the potential of gospel illusion when he was asked to perform at a church camp meeting after his conversation, conversion to Christianity. We never know what direction our Hello Self moments are going to take us. And I think that is the whole purpose of this podcast is to help us pay attention to those Hello Self moments that maybe can change the tra trajectory of our life. Having performed in 50 states, five provinces of Canada, and 34 countries of the world, Steve now resides, guess where? Right here in Nashville, Tennessee. In his travel, Steve has performed with magicians Harry Blackstone. You'll know this one too, David Copperfield, 
actress Jane Russell, Clifton Davis, and I really like this one too, Western TV and movie star Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. I remember them when I was a little girl too. <laughs> and other countries like the president of New Guinea. Steve has also been honored to present a command performance before the heads of state of Barbados in the West Indies. Okay, I'm going, Steve served seven years as the international president of the Fellowship of Christian Mag Mag Magicians and the world's largest, he, oh, he and his wife, Barbara, owned a manufacturing company, Doc Haley Gospel Magic Company. And they have produced 18 ma books over the years and now own Estates of Magic, an organization that helps retired or widows of magicians arrange for the sale of their props. There's going to be so many gifts that Steve Varro shares today just about his own life and all of the things he's done because he's touched through magic in almost every aspect of life. So I'm going to jump out of here and let Steve now tell you the real story. Okay, Steve, turning it over to you now. Okay, thank you very much, Patricia. And I really hadn't realized how much I had done until you read my bio. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a great career. It really has. But people often ask me, what made you to become a magician? Why? How does that happen? Yeah. I mean, most of us are doctors and lawyers and bakers and what have you. Candlestick um, makers. <laughs> there you go. When I was 10 years old, I went to see a magic show. And it was at a, a theater in Indiana, northern Indiana. And the magician had me help him on stage with a trick. And I got done and I said to myself, that's what I want to be when I grow up. I'm only 10 years old at that point, I, but I figured if I could learn that trade, I could make my sister disappear. My sister's still around, and I'm very thankful for that, but uh, that trick didn't work. No. <laughs> uh, I bought my first magic trick from a, a, a cigar store. Wow. It, was a, it was a trick that, that taught me how to take four nickels and turn them into four dimes, and I thought, this is great. I can make all kinds of money. Exactly. What a deal. That's better than my allowance. <laughs> it didn't take long for me to realize that when the light bulb came on, it was a trick. Yeah. A gimmick, an illusion. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I learned that the tricks of the magician were not the real magic. The real magic was from bringing joy and, and laughter and happiness to others. By entertaining them, of course. And so for the next 10 years, I studied magic. I still have that trick. It's over there on my shelf, as a matter of fact. And it's been just been a delight to learn as much as I could about doing magic before doing my first program. But there was a short blip in there where I stopped doing the magic and joined the United States Navy during Vietnam. And I didn't make it to Vietnam. I'm not sorry that I didn't make it to Vietnam. No. But I was, when I got out of the Navy, I bought a magic shop, not necessarily to keep the magic shop open, but to help furnish my own show and then sell the rest of it, which paid for what I had paid for the, the magic store. And that was, uh, that was a win-win situation. The owner of the magic shop won and I won and the people that I sold the excess magic to won. So it was a good thing. My first paid program, 1969, December. Oh, wow. I went out and I was trying to be a suave and debonair magician. <laughs> and the first thing I did, I had a, a thing that's called a sleeve bouquet, and I won't explain too much about that, but obviously it goes up your sleeve. I took off my gloves and produced this bouquet, and it caught on my French cuff cufflinks, <laughs> and it ripped all the threads that were holding the feathers together <laughs> on the bouquet, and all these feathers went floating down. I looked at the audience. I was holding a stick now. No bouquet. The bouquet was ruined. And I said, <clears throat> I, I didn't say anything. I just looked at that and put it aside. But my next trick, I took a um, magic wand and I gestured toward a, a crystal glass that I had on a table. And I was just about 
that much too close. <laughs> my wand hit that glass and it shattered into a million pieces. <laughs> I looked at the glass, I looked at the audience and I said, I lose more glasses that way. <laughs> and they laughed and they thought I was doing a comedy program. And here I was trying to be the, the next or the precursor to David Copperfield. <laughs> I learned a lot in that show. <laughs> oh my God, that's um, fabulous. <laughs> so I, I decided not to be the swab and debonair, debonair magician, but I added a lot of comedy to my program and we just had a great time. I performed then for several years around Indiana and Illinois. Then I accepted Christ as my personal savior. And that was one of those hello self moments. Yes. Yes. I, I decided to give up magic. And somebody said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you ever thought about doing this for the Lord? And I thought, wow, I'm not sure how that would work. <laughs> and so we did a little more studying and he asked me to do a program for a church group. And one thing led to another. And I have since, as you said, been, I've traveled and performed in every state in the United States, several uh, provinces of Canada and 34 countries around the world. It's just amazing. I decided to retire in 19, excuse me, 2019, December 31st, that would be my last day. That would be 50 years of performing. And I, that's why I did it. I figured 50 years is long enough. And besides, I didn't want to leave the profession with people going, look at that old man. He should have retired <laughs> years ago. I wanted to go out on top. Yes. And I did. And people who do remember me, if there are two or three, I'm sure there must be at least two or three, they will remember me in a positive light. And ironically, three months after I retired, COVID hit. Oh, yeah. And, and it was amazing because so many of my entertainment friends lost all of their bookings. I felt so sorry for them. I, of course, lost nothing because I had retired three months right. early. And it was just, I believe that was a God thing, the timing and everything of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that was my career in a nutshell, but I learned a lot during that time. And I do have some things I'd like to share, if that's okay. Oh, that is exactly why we're here, our audience. I'm already mesmerized, and our audience <laughs> is going to be even more mesmerized. This is phenomenal. This is great. Yes, and you are a great presenter, by the way. Wow. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Magic is a tricky business pun there, but it's also a very enjoyable business. But we have to remember, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to remember that it is a business. Yeah. Just if you're a singer or a dancer or a public speaker or any other business, you got to remember the business side of your business, whatever your business is. And I'm going to be giving some examples and probably a lot of them will have to do with magic, but Oh, that's fabulous. You could place yes. them into your own your own career. Yes. Personally, I am not bothered by the lack of magicians, or should say the lack of good magicians. I am I am more bothered by the abundance of bad magicians. And there are a lot. There yes. are a lot of bad singers. There are a lot of bad dancers. There are a lot of bad public speakers <laughs> and others. But the reason is, the reason for the magicians not to, not being better is because they haven't learned how to be an entertainer. The right. world does not need any more magicians who are not entertainers. We have enough. You're not in the business of magic or doing magic. I wasn't a magician. I was an entertainer. And we're going to go into that. Yes. Oh, too, my gosh. But, what a uh, great parallel. Yeah. Howard Thurston, <clears throat> an old time vaudeville magician, said, my show is a play and I am an actor playing the part of a magician. We are all actors playing our parts. And what's the job of the, the actor? To make it look convincing, to make it look real. You wanna make your, you, whatever you're doing real. If you're a dancer and you're dancing in a, let's say for example, in an opera, I don't know, the Swan Song or doing a the Nutcracker Suite. Yes. It's a play. It's not real, but your job is to make it look real. Yes. If you're doing a song, like a song that I heard you mention, I think, a while back, The Dance. Yes. Uh, by Garth Brooks. 
if you sing that song, there are a lot of people that know the words to that song and can sing that song. But you have to live that song. You have to become that song when you sing it. And that's what will make it touch the audience and grip the audience. You have to live the part, make it look real. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's funny that you would bring that up because that is exactly, we try, the song itself tells us a lot about life. Yes. I would have missed the dance, the pain. You went through some pain when you hit the glass and things didn't go <laughs> right, but you would have missed the dance if you right. hadn't have just made something out of that. Yes, I love that. Thank you for that uh, connection. I, yes, I had other painful moments in my life, but had I not experienced them, and what led up to them, I would have missed the dance. Yes. And the dance was so important to me. And it, to all of us, to all of us. It is to all of us because right. that's about life, Steve. Yes. That's what life, yes. That's right. And none of us would buy a trumpet, take one lesson, and then go to po perform a, a trumpet solo for a paying audience. We wouldn't do that. We need to learn everything we can about our career before we invest our life savings in it. If you want to be an actor, learn all you can about being an actor before you pack your bags and book a one-way ticket to Hollywood. Yes, good point. Let's talk about assets for a minute. We all have assets in our business. What is your most important asset? You can list a lot of things in your assets, uh, the building, the equipment, the inventory, uh, accounts receivable, a huge list. But what is the most important aspect or asset that you have? The most important asset that you have is your clients, your customers. Mm -hmm. You can lose everything. But as long as you still have your clients and your customers, you can rebuild your business. Those are so important. Don't forget them. So often I see performers well, and others who go after people that are new. For example... If you're a first-time customer with us, we'll give you a new cell phone. Yes. What about the guy who has supported you for 15 years with your Absolutely. cell phone? Absolutely. Give him a free one, too. <laughs> you know, in other words, we need to take care of and reward our current customers. You need to take care of them. It's very important. Yes, relationships mm -hmm. are really important. Extremely, extremely. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, we, we all want to touch base with our with our um, people, with our yes. clients and our potential clients. But how do you get the potential clients to spend more time with your promotional piece? Now, I'm not an advocate of always sending things out by email. We are not there yet. We are partially there, but a lot of people need to have something in their hand to look at. And when you send out a brochure or a, a pamphlet to a, a prospective client, you want them to read it. You want them to spend time with it. How are you going to get them to spend time with it? There are five business days in a week. If your campaign is directed to business people, there are five days, Monday through Friday. Well, what happens on Friday? You're getting ready for the weekend. You don't have time for, for new mail. You're getting ready for the weekend. You got a golf engagement or, or what have you. you on Monday... You're catching up for what you didn't do on Friday, so you don't want them to receive your mail on Monday. Thursday is the wind-down week, but Tuesday and Wednesday are the days you want your mail to hit their desk. If you're mailing locally, you want to mail on Monday. They will most likely get it Tuesday and some on Wednesday. Because let's say, for example, they have 15 minutes to look at their mail, and they get an average of 30 pieces of mail. That means they've got, what? half a minute to look at your mail. But the slowest mail days are Tuesday and Wednesday. Maybe they only get five or 10 letters on that day. They have, but they've allotted 15 minutes for themselves to look at that mail. So now they're going to look at your piece, maybe five, uh, two or three minutes. And you're sending them an enjoyable piece. You're not advertising caskets or something like that of a business. If you you have a business that's an up business, dancers, singers, what have you, public speakers, that's an upsell. In other words, that's a, you're not trying to sell them something they really don't want to buy. And so they're going to have more time to look at your brochure or whatever the mailing pieces that you're sending. And that's very important to let them 
spend time with you in the mail, much more than they will online. They look at a, an email that they get, the next one they go to, they probably will never get back to your email. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. uh, email can waste a lot of time. Sure, it's free. And a lot of people say, yeah, but it costs money to advertise. No, it doesn't cost money to advertise. It makes money to advertise. You have to make sure that you're going to advertise. If you're doing direct mail advertise, you want to mail it to your target audience. If I'm selling scuba diving equipment, my target audience is going to be scuba divers and shops that scale, sell scuba diving equipment. I'm not going to send a, a piece of mail out to everybody on in Madison or Hermitage or Nashville because 95 of those percent of those people don't dive. The waste it'll go right in the wastebasket. You know, right. you want to do target marketing. Now, as far as business cards, I think you should leave a business card everywhere. You should have a business card and make your business card unique. I receive a lot of business cards, but I'm going to show you my business card. My business card is the most incredible business card I've ever seen. That's a pretty brazen statement for someone. <laughs> yeah. It is. So I apologize if you don't agree with me. No, it, it is. I agree. This is my business card. Now, you can't read it very well. Let's see. I'll hold it up as much as I can. It says I'm a Christian illusionist. And look out open. This side here, it shows the secular programs that I do. This side here shows a comedy character that I do. And this side shows a company that I own. So you've got four, four different sides to it. I didn't want to have four business cards. So I made this one business card that you can change into four different business cards. It looks like a magic trick. <laughs> yes, isn't it? It is. But I've had, this is not a business card. People are going to say, oh, thank you and put it in their pocket. They're going to play with it. They're going to right. talk to their friends about it. They're going to show it to others. And they you have. gave me one and I still yeah, have, still it. have it. many others. <laughs> well, that I was two, year, two years ago or so, at least. Yeah. Probably more. <laughs> Make your advertising something that's going to be eye catching. And let's see, what else can we talk about? Oh, get an, have an answering machine. If they're calling people to, to hire them and you don't answer your phone and nobody picks it up, they're going to go on to the next person. But if you have an answering machine, they'll leave a message. You can call them back and possibly still, if it's if you're talking about a booking, still get the booking. Now, I understand that there are a lot of people out there that, that are doing more than performances. Just work that to your advantage in your business. Call your local, if you've got a new business, call your local paper. Contact the city editor. Tell them about what you do. I did that when I moved into uh, uh, Tennessee. I moved to White House um, at first. And I sent a, a letter to the editor. I ended up getting four columns, uh, eight inches, and, and a photo, or actually three photos, uh, 32 inches of ad space for the cost of a letter and a stamp. And obviously, I could not have afforded that much advertising. Oh, no. yeah. That's... They came out with a photographer, and they took some pictures. They did an interview. And I was booked for quite a while after that because of that one stamp. Of course, stamps were a little cheaper now. Now it's going to cost you 50 cents for that stamp. <laughs> if that's too much, let me know. I think I can loan you 50 cents. <laughs> so anyway, marketing is very important. Word of mouth marketing is probably the most important thing. That's the best advertising. And the reason what I say you, that- Steve, what do you think about, I was just talking to a young lady yesterday who's starting a business. Mm -hmm. And she's been going to all of these networking groups. What do you say about networking groups? Your thoughts? I've never dealt with net networking groups. Yeah, where they help promote you. You go there and you have a lunch and you tell them what you do and you give them a business card. And then supposedly the process is supposed to be that they tell other people about you. The reason I'm bringing this up, I did a speech one time about so many people, okay, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there, and they pass out a million business cards, and nothing ever happens. And that's what she said was happening with her, is nothing ever happens. And I say, I, I suggested to her, 
what is your purpose in going to the networking group? First mm -hmm. of all, if you just say you're going there and you're going to follow them, no, what do you want them to know? Because it goes back to your thing about mm -hmm. advertising or marketing or, but building relationships. So nine times out of 10, if I've ever gone to one, I walk away with one person that I connected with simply because I was purposefully focused on what I wanted to get there. So well, I'm would... just wondering if people waste a lot of time. I'm wondering about these networks, right? And you go there, in other words, when you go, there are a lot of people there. Yes. And they pick up your business card or whatever. Yes. You have a table. And you and... have lunch and you get to know people there. Yes. Yeah. If it is, I went to one in Vegas, Las Vegas, and it was for uh, a group called Cast. It was uh -huh. for enter entertainers and, and and agents. It was str it was strictly to put the agents in contact with the entertainers. Yes, and it, it was a very successful thing because it was direct marketing. It was purpose driven. You exactly. went there in order to meet people that could help you take your business to the next right. level. And so I think a lot of times uh, individuals are not thinking about what is my purpose for going. Right. And right. They, uh, well, and what, it. what's the group that she's going to? What does she do for a living, for example? Sells uh, insurance, just started life insurance they, policy. Sells life insurance. How many people do you think going there are looking to buy life insurance? They're mostly young people. Yeah, most of them are not. That would be a waste of time, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, there are times when market that type of networking can be very helpful. If these were all military people just getting out of the service and needed life insurance or something, or whatever your your business is, if, it, if the people going there were connected with your business in some way or in need of your business. Right. Um, that's a that's a purpose-driven networking right. decision, just that's like very, you very did. Important. Yeah. Perfect personal contacts like that can be very important, but only if it's purpose-driven. That's exactly um, what uh, my point I'm bringing up. Yes. Yeah. And I saw that when you went to the, La the Las Vegas one, you were definitely purpose-driven. It was yes. an opportunity. Yes. So yeah, I think a lot of times, and I don't know if any of our audiences, but I'll tell you a lot of people that I have worked with in my career consulting and business consulting, that's what they do. They just go. Now, if you're coming in town for the first time, maybe you're just moving in, but I still say time is money. It is. It is. And yeah. Getting back to this, this young lady who sells insurance. Just life insurance? I I don't know that I can't okay, say well, that. Let me for give sure. you an example here. Let's say let's say she sells any kind of insurance. Boat boat insurance. Yes. Go to the boat show. Yes. People are buying boats. They need insurance for those boats. That would be purpose driven. That's but if you're just going to a hodgepodge of people, that's a waste of time, I think. That's I can tell you, I just, I did that uh, about six or eight months ago because I wanted to see what was going on. Sure. And nothing came out of that. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not blaming them. I'm blaming me because I didn't uh, investigate enough about what the business was about. I did meet a lot of people, but nothing came out of it from a standpoint of business development. And I think if a person is wanting to make contacts that help them with their interest, then I think what you did in Las Vegas is very important. And that is, or the boat show idea. Yes. Yeah. So well, uh, I think those are important. That's a, that's a part of marketing. Yes. Another part of marketing is saying thank you to your customers. Let me explain mm. what I mean by that. Oh, very good point. Whenever I did a show, I always gave my customers a gift. We're not talking about a million dollar. I wouldn't buy cars for people. Uh, I would give them this. Now, all this is a little address book. But it's magnetic on the back and on the front. And it just sticks together. And they can put it in their wallet. They or can what? put it in their wallet or in their pocket. But on the front, it has Share the Magic, Steve Varro. And it's got my address and information. Now, the reason this works so well, as opposed to this... Ah. Pins, 
they put them in a usually I have a, a, a jar, not a jar, a, a cup, coffee cup. Yeah. Stick them in there. The only time I look at that pin is when I'm looking to write something. I don't know what's on that pin. I don't look at that thing. That's because very interesting. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I did things. that very. <laughs> well, I did it too at one point, but now I use this. This is something they keep in their pocket. And when they're using somebody says, but how do I get a hold of so, so and so? They, oh, here, well, his, uh, his address is right here. Uh, oh, there it is. Hey, that's a handy little deal. Where did you get that? Oh, I had a magician here. This guy here. This magician gave it to our company is looking for a magician. Can I have that information? Yes. And I've got a, a lead. So, so it takes the conversation to the next level instead exactly. of just saying, hi, I'm Steve, a Christian illusionist. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And so this kind of advertising is very important. In in my new business, um, I shouldn't say new business, it's been 14, 12 years that I've had it. <clears throat> it's called the States of Magic. Uh, you mentioned it. And one of the things I give out are are these. <laughs> it's a little uh, oh yes, yeah. and a keychain. You got your key, but you can't see. So you've got the light that'll show you where the keyhole is. Yes, and yeah. at least, and they're going to be picking that up and yeah. putting and their keys nothing, on really. there. And it, yes, right. And for every person who buys uh, my product, I give them one of these, and it says, "Visit our website when you get around to it." Well. Uh. This, on one side, has a statesofmagic.com, but the other side is printed to it, making this a round to it. So yes. got a round to it. Now you can go to my website. <laughs> Fantastic. Pass those out. Not only are you a magician with marketing, you're a magician with <laughs> all aspects of the business. Well, that was the reason that I traveled to 34 countries and all 50 states. Bidding is very important. Are you still doing your work out there? But for, for me? Yes. No, I'm not. In fact, I'm coming out of retirement to do a very special program for a very special lady next a week from Sunday. Yes. And that's that's the only program I'm planning in my future. And that special lady is me. He's going to be perform magic acts or whatever he wants to call them on my High Heels Cabaret show. Funny that you would bring that up, Steve. <laughs> Looking forward to that. That would exactly. be fun. I can't and by the wait. way, yes. I will have a printed introduction for you. And that's very important for any of you who are doing that type of thing where you have to be introduced. But you could be a... a CEO of a company, and you're going to be introduced. Yeah, have written uh, a printed out uh, introduction. I, I've had people say, "We got this guy who's going to do some magic for you." So, hang on to your wallets. Yeah. In. and that's it. That's not the kind of introduction I want. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's interesting. A, a friend is wanting to start his own business. He does do con consulting kind of work. But he wants to take it to the next level and mm -hmm. um, maybe get out of the doing as much as running a bigger business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I ask him about his resume. It's It doesn't mean that the big resume has to be it, but to have some way. And that's what I really like about my guest. They give me a shortened version or for my High Heels Cabaret show, I create a shortened version. Now, yeah. on the Hello Self podcast, because of the diversity of a lot of the people and the fact that we are educating or giving other people tips and ideas about how they can expand their business, sometimes I go into it a little longer like we did today. But mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. I think getting something out there to make it easy for our customers and the people we want to work with to yeah. grab a quick picture of who we are and share it with people. Yes, that's very important. Other things, let's see. Your attitude, not your aptitude, ah. is going to determine your altitude in business. Oh my gosh, what a great quote. Let me say it again. <laughs> your attitude, attitude, not, your, not aptitude, your aptitude, will determine your altitude. How high you go. That's yes. Right. 
That's, that's right. great. Now, I hope audience, you got that because that's something you can use too in Absolutely. your own conversation, your hello self conversations with yourself. Another way to say that is don't drool on the check. And let me explain what I mean by that. Ah, very good. Point. When you get a check from the customer, oftentimes, if you're working for a business, it will come in an envelope. Take the envelope, thank them, put the envelope in your pocket. Do not open the envelope and look at it with them in your presence and then go, ah, money. If they're a business and they're giving you a check, they're going to give you the right amount. And if they're not, you've got a check, you can take it back to them. Put the envelope in your pocket, thank them kindly, leave, and then open the check. Get a half a mile down the road, then open it and look at it, yes. but not in their presence. A uh, great point. So you want to make them feel good. Compliment them. Make sure that when you come to the event, you're there to help them. Not just do your act, but if there's anything else I can do, you let me know. It's important. All your income is not profit. In other words, don't spend it. Here's what I mean. Let's say, for example, I sell widgets. And these widgets cost me a dollar a piece, and I bought a hundred of them. And I sell them for $2 a piece. I sell them all and I now suddenly have $200. Woo, I can go out and have a good time. I can't take that $200 and go out and have a good time because tomorrow somebody's going to come in and say, I'd like one of those widgets for $2. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any. When are you going to have some more? I don't know. I don't have any money to buy any more. So if, if the widgets cost you a dollar and you're selling them for $2, half of that money should be used to invest in new stock. Yes. And, and anything more than that, invest as well. There's a lot of things you can invest in. A uh, $1,000 invested at 15% today will be worth $8,000 in 15 years. Yes. Television, a $1,000 television invested in today will be worth $15 in 15 years. An yeah. excellent piece of advice there is that we see the money and we run with whatever is in our mind about that. Right. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go celebrate this. And a lot of times they call it a celebration. But the fact is, celebration needs to wait till you get the altitude. <laughs> exactly right. Well spoken. Exactly. <clears throat> oh my I, I believe very much in the power of visualization. If you don't think you can do it, chances are you're not going to do it. You have to believe in yourself. Let me give you an example. Yeah, boy, that's so true. Many years ago, back in January of 1990, I asked to be a contestant on The Wheel of Fortune, the TV show. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so they they called, they sent me a letter first. And they said, we will be calling you within the next 13 months. I thought, 13 months, that's a lifetime. Okay. <laughs> they finally did call. And when they did... They asked me if I could come and do the program on a specific particular date that I had already given to ah. God. I promised that date to God. Uh, I had something to do for him, and yes. it was important, and I wasn't going to back out of it. And so I said, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm yep. not available that date. He said, okay, thank you. And they hung up, and I thought, I hope they call back. <laughs> they did call back, and two weeks later, they called back, and they had a, another opening. And it was two weeks away. I knew that, that I got the booking, the second call, because I was honorable to my commitment. Yes. Uh, it doesn't have to be a commitment to God. It can be any commitment. If I get a $1,000 show from a company, and then somebody calls me the next week for that same date for a $5,000 show, I'm sorry, I'm already booked. Yes. I have to honor. My integrity is too important. Okay. I Oh, my. I believe in that 100%. And I'm uh -huh. not sure. I, I do believe in that. It, it, we want to, so often, we want to grab the next fast buck and just leave our customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I see that happen. I see oh, that happen with my, with my own business. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it can destroy a business if it's done too often or to the wrong people. Yeah. Getting back to the Wheel of Fortune. So I had two weeks before my appearance date. Every day and every night when I went to bed, I dreamt about the Wheel of Fortune. And every time I was on the Wheel of Fortune in my dreams, I won between thirty dollars and $40,000. Yes. And I thought, okay, so I kept dreaming this dream. When I got on the show and 
So I really wasn't too surprised when I ended up winning $37,000. The thing that upset me was that I didn't dream about winning a larger amount. But I was satisfied with the $37,000. <laughs> you know, Steve, I, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Listening and the Knowing. Mm -hmm. And that is an example of your dreams can mean something. Yes, they can. Or our awaking, our hello self moments can mean something. Yeah. And sometimes we just, oh, that was just an accident. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. But I think that if we pay attention, our soul, our body, our spirit, our relationship to God gives us signals along the way to yes. help us manifest at the altitude that we want to be in. And I'm telling you, it is so true. And I've lived it my own life. And yeah, I, every book that I have written, I did not create. They came to me in a dream or as I was waking up in the morning. Well, that's the way some of the greatest books are created. The Bible was created that way. It was written by people that were inspired by God. They didn't write it. They just translated what their inspirations were on the paper. But yes. anyway, let's get back to this. Speaking of the Wheel of Fortune. Yes. Um, you got to buy vowels. If you're going to do advertising, yes. you got to buy vowels. A E I O U. Yes. For example, A access. Tell your perspective or prospect who you are, <clears throat> how they can get a hold of you. Make your phone number easy to see and rememberable. That's that's A, that's access. Examples. Show your prospect that you have a proven track record. Include brief testimonials from satisfied customers. List a few noble notable references. If you are Targeting a particular audience, mention some of the important people in that field who will endorse you and your program or your product. The I is in impression. Let your prospects get a glimpse of you through your promotional material. Use catchy phrase and eye-catching photos. Have an unusual bit of artwork to generate interest in your programs. The O would be obvious benefits. Tell your prospect why they should use you. What would be my benefit from using you? Make your next meeting a hit. Give them at least one reason that they can't live without you. Yes. And the you would be urgency. Make your prospects feel that the world would collapse if they don't call you immediately. Come first. First come, first serve. First come, uh, yeah. Only a few openings left. Uh, seats are limited uh, while the supply lasts. Statements like that show the urgency. We hear no, that all the e time, too. Yes. <laughs> we hear, what was the E again, Steve? Yeah, the E was examples. Oh, yeah. 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 Brief testimonials. I love that because these are things, what you are giving the audience is tools that they can use to create the business they want or manifest their ideas. This is exactly what I was hoping my magician would bring to us. <laughs> I didn't travel around the world by not doing this stuff. And now that I'm not doing it anymore, I'm hoping that somebody else can utilize some of this information. Oh, yes. It's itself a success. And, and another thing that's important is, and we're going to wrap it up here in just a couple of minutes. Yes. But another thing that's important is knowing what business you're in. Now, let me explain. Um, Avon, for example is not in the makeup business. United, uh, Union Pacific is not in the railroad business. Think about that for a minute. Avon, yeah. Avon is not in the makeup business. Avon is in the beautification business. Isn't that better than makeup business? Union Pacific is not in the in It the sounds like business. a level up, Steve. It it's, is. It's, yes. It is. Uh, Union Pacific is in the transportation industry. Yes. What business are you in? Make it interesting. If people ask me what interest, what 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 I do for a living, I would say I create education in entertaining ways in an effort to lead others into a more loving relationship with the Creator and Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh! Oh my so gosh! More than being a magician. This is uh, yeah, exactly. This is you know what I always say that titles are not who we really are. It's just things that we give for the world to, because they put us in boxes. 
And oh, yeah. so it's a, okay, he's a magician. We're going to put him in that box. But we are more. We're, we're much more. Oh, my God. And you've it's just amazing. proven today that you're much more. You're a consultant. You're a coach. You, right. You're an expert in certain fields. You're a magician. You can entertain. I could just go on and on in one or two titles. Did Maybe I, I could become a public speaker and teach you this stuff. You are. <laughs> No, you are a public. You just have written a beautiful speech for mm. people. That, Steve, so many people are looking for that next step in life, moving forward, going to do something, but they don't know how to start. Or yes. they, yeah, and they can't afford to hire somebody. Here you have given them tools right now to get their dreams and goals off that someday shelf and at least mm -hmm. take a step forward. I certainly hope so. No. Now, in closing, I've got a couple of things. One, two things to say, actually. Number one, okay. be committed to quality. Oh, my God. Quality. Don't go to Walmart. I shouldn't say that. I own Walmart stock. Don't go to J.C. Penney's. That's not a bad store. And buy your clothes. They may last you a few years. Buy the best clothes you can afford to buy. Yes. Now, if pennies is all you can afford, I understand that. But if you can afford better, buy better. No, buying the cheapest you can find is not a bargain. And that's true with magic. That's clues with the dance clothes. I don't know. Everything in life. If you go, if you always go the cheapest route, you're always going to be the cheapest. You know. Steve, it, it is a mindset. It is a mindset yes. and it, it goes through our whole life if we have that mindset. Yes. I, I so, wanted to I gotta tell you a quick story here. Right I wrote I wore an outfit the other day and somebody said, Oh my god, that's beautiful. Where did you get that? Or when did I because I, I just love it and it's I said, I know you're not going to believe this, but I'm from Indiana and a friend of mine sold direct directly from Doncaster. They were a little bit more expensive, but I bought this 30 years ago and I wear it every year. And you know what? And I it's not that I have a lot of money. What I do is I buy quality. There are comments that I hear from my wife all the time when she'll be talking to somebody and she'll say, I have shoes older than you. Oh my, my God. So do older than you. <laughs> <laughs> and and she does. And they're all quality and they're all taken care of. You've oh got God. to take care of your props. Uh, 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 I, I, oh, this I yeah. we could talk all day. And I mean this is but I want to invite everybody. Oh, is there anything that you any other things that you want to say, Steve? Otherwise, I'm going to wrap us up today. Well, in closing, I just want to say this. You have to be able to believe you can do what you do. If you don't, you, you won't believe it. Don't take your eyes off your goal. Don't listen to those who have never succeeded, but are so anxious to tell you why you're going to fail. Don't listen to those people. If you're a, if you have a dream, whatever that dream is, dare to believe it and to try it. Give it a chance to happen. Don't let someone else rob you of that faith in yourself that makes things happen. If you have a flame of a dream down inside, thank God for it and, and, yes. and do something about it. Yes. But don't let anybody else blow that flame out. You know what I say to that, Steve? I say when somebody tells me that, next. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, my family says, sis, when are you going to retire? And I said, I have tw three times. Why do I have <laughs> That I just, I feel like I've got more to give to the world and to enjoy in my own life. Yeah, Absolutely. what do you got there? What have I got here is a rock. Just an ugly old rock. Some of us have some ugliness someplace in yeah. our life. We may not be the handsomest person or the best looking person. Yes. Uh, there may be a lot of problems. But this is the outside. What's really important is what's on the inside. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yes, I can. It's beautiful quartz. Yes. Uh, yeah, the pinky. Worry about the outside as much as the inside. The outside is important, don't get me wrong. But the inside is what's most important. That's exactly your integrity. That's exactly your heart, 
your drive, your desires. Go for it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, this is fabulous. I love it. And it just uh, confirms beliefs that I've got in my own life and that I try to share. I am so grateful that you came on my podcast. And I know my audience is just because of the magic you have shared through ideas and strategies for life. This is magic, Steve. You're still committing or co doing magic by simply sharing your expertise. Oh my gosh, this is great. And I want to, as we begin to sign off, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. And to my audience, I'd like to say, come to see my High Heels Cabaret show on June the 2nd at 1.30 at Peg Studios on 120 White Pike Road. White Bridge Pike Road. Bridge Pike. Yeah, White Bridge Pike Road in Nashville. So come and see it. It's free. You can get in and just see the shooting of the show. This is the Hi Hello Self podcast, and I am your host, Patricia Leonard. I hope you picked up something today that improves the quality of your life. And remember, I always like to say to you, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.